This video will be discussing the effects of intimate partner violence on the mother and fetus. Intimate partner violence, or IPV for short, is described as the physical, sexual, or psychological harm by a current or former partner or spouse. It is something women of all races, religions, ethnicities, economic, educational status, age, or sexual orientation can face. According to the Canadian Police Department, women between the ages of 25 and 34 experience the most spousal violence. In terms of maternal and fetal health, women who suffer from abuse during pregnancy are more likely to be depressed, suicidal, and experience complications. These complications can include anemia, infections, perinatal death, intrauterine growth restriction, and not enough weight gain. To gain a better understanding, we asked Dr. O'Reilly, a gynecologist at McMaster University, to explain the effects of IPV on the mother and fetus. Partner violence, which increases during pregnancy, is often aimed at the uterus, at the thing that the partner is not in control of, of, and trauma to the uterus can directly harm uh, the fetus, mainly by causing issues with the placenta, uh, which might lead to uh, the fetus not growing as well as it should, or uh, even uh, stillbirth can result if the placenta is harmed significantly. The second area would be that intimate partner violence often causes women to not seek health care or to not be as healthy as they could be themselves and so they're at increased risk of complications from the pregnancy because they're not coming to the doctors often and not being as healthy as they could be. Women may experience and understand IPV differently. Women who are of color, refugees and lesbians Aboriginal and women with disabilities may have more barriers to disclose abuse than other women. Barriers for immigrant women include social isolation and the inability to communicate their abuse. Furthermore, what may seem as abuse in Canadian culture may be perceived as normal in another. For lesbian women or women in other forms of gay relationships, abuse may come in the form of outing someone of their sexual orientation without their consent. The abuser can also convince their partner that abuse is normal in a gay relationship. Additionally, women of color may use past experiences of racism in how they react to abuse. For example, a woman of color may not readily seek aid from the police if she has seen members of her race treated unfairly. Aboriginal women in Canada experience a higher rate of abuse than non-Aboriginal women. They are eight times more likely to be murdered by their partner. Women with disabilities also experience abuse at a higher rate. Many cases go unreported due to the fear and reliance on their abuser. For both these groups, barriers include the lack of police intervention and the lack of services available to them. I know it, certainly in the psychology literature and also in medicine, people are actively exploring ways to identify women who might be at risk of intimate partner violence trying to give those who practice medicine very simple tools to screen for it and to find those women and figuring out what's the best way to give those women tools to keep them safe. On average, 24 people per minute are victims of rape, physical violence, or stalking by an intimate partner which means more than 12 million women and men over the course of a year. Nearly 15% of women and 4% of men have been injured as a result of intimate partner violence. The Women Abuse Working Group is a coalition of 20 community agencies that raises awareness and coordinates services to eradicate violence against women and children. They work with community and government organizations, individuals, survivor and consumers who believe in the same movement. For those who are experiencing domestic violence, there are many resources that can be accessed. There is a national domestic violence hotline that can be reached at 1-800-799-7233. There are highly trained advocates that are available 24-7, 365 days a year to talk confidently with anyone who is experiencing domestic violence, seeking resources or information, 
or even want to question any unhealthy aspects of their relationship. The Good Shepherd in Hamilton, Ontario also has a transitional housing and support program for women who are survivors of violence and abuse and help women in accessing services to establish abuse-free lives in their community. Additionally, the Hamilton General Hospital has a domestic violence care center that provides specialized health care for individuals who are experiencing domestic violence. Intimate partner violence is unacceptable and to make women, to empower women to feel that they can talk about it, that to empower women to leave relationships where that is present, to empower women to bring concerns about that up with their healthcare provider, with other people, so that they can access resources, leave abusive situations. We need to make it something that's not hidden, and we need to make sure that women who are experiencing it know that it's not normal. Uh, and then it's not acceptable and that there are ways that they can protect themselves. If you are experiencing any form of intimate partner violence, know that you do not have to stand alone. There are many resources available to you within the community.